Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. Today on Volusia Magazine, we will go to the Ocean Center and tell you about a three-day convention that may have a future impact for more events at the county-run facility. Then we will tell you about a family event at the Marine Science Center that's free and open to the public. And then Business Beat reporter Michelle Coates will take us to a local company that has a long history in the area, serving not only national customers, but also international clients. Finally, we will celebrate Veterans Day with our guest, Mike White, who's in the studio with Community Information Director Dave Byron. Those segments, news, and much more coming up on Volusia Magazine. Stay tuned. Some very important guests were in town recently for a three-day convention at the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach. Nearly 450 meeting planners and 650 hotel and industry suppliers attended Rejuvenate Marketplace. It's an appointment-only trade show designed for faith-based meeting planners. The meeting planners are a very important guest because they are responsible for choosing convention centers for their clients. Don Poor, director of the Ocean Center, said while the event produced immediate economic impacts for the area, it has a huge potential for future business. Well, economically for the conference itself, Andrew, we figure that it will uh, input about $700,000 into the local economy for this meeting alone. However, there were 450 meeting planners that may plan from one to 25 meetings a year, and the economic impact from that, uh, potential for that is absolutely tremendous. We've never had that many meeting planners in here at any one time, so it's a very premier event for us. Rejuvenate is produced by Collinson Media and Events, a senior leader in the meetings, travel, and tourism industry. This was the first time in Florida for the Georgia-based group, which puts on Rejuvenate as well as two other similar conferences, Connect for Association Event Planners and Collaborate for Corporate Meeting Planners. So we're here because we want to introduce, again, our meetings, our buyers, our planners, our professionals to this area once again, whether they've been here or not, because what we provide for them is they are hosting, they're being hosted by us, but they're being shown a beautiful representation of Daytona Beach, which already has beautiful palm trees, already has a wonderful ocean, already has a beautiful ocean center, which is perfect for our event because it gives us plenty of space. What we love about it is that we get to show them what it's like for them when they come and experience the same type of phenomenon. The Ocean Center can accommodate meetings of 10 to 10,000 and offers more than 205,000 square feet of interior, exhibit, meeting, and convention space. You can learn more by going to OceanCenter.com. Fun and education await nature lovers at the 9th Annual Bird Fest, which takes flight from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday, November 9th at Volusia County's Marine Science Center in Ponce Inlet. The popular event provides an opportunity for visitors to learn about bird migration, watch raptor demonstrations, and witness the release of rehabilitated seabirds. Uh, another great addition this year is going to be an art car uh, brought in by Spanos Motors and it's going to give kids a chance to actually have a hands-on art project and decorating a, a car uh, with uh, various uh, bird themes. So it's going to be a really fun day. Uh, we've got uh, all kinds of exhibits and uh, opportunities for lectures. Uh, Kevin Bagwell from uh, Full Moon Natives is going to do a program on uh, landscaping uh, to encourage bird life in your own backyard and we're going to have a number of other lectures as well as uh, special programs with our live raptors and just a fun day with uh, music and food and a chance to get out and enjoy uh, what the Marine Science Center has to offer the uh, citizens of Volusia County. The event will culminate with the release of rehabilitated birds at 3 p.m. at the Dog Beach in Lighthouse Point Park. It's a five-minute walk from the Marine Science Center. Uh, we are hoping to have some birds to be able to release back to the wild. You know, we have our bird hospital. We get in over 1,500 birds every year that come in with a variety of ailments. And luckily, uh, a lot of those birds are able to be released back to the wild. 
and on our bird festival, we're hoping to be able to have uh, a couple birds that are going to be ready for release and we'll get them back to the wild. Since the Marine Science Center opened, more than 600,000 visitors have been educated about marine life and staff has cared for thousands of turtles, birds and other sea animals. 17,250 of which were reptiles such as gopher tortoises, freshwater turtles and snakes. The Seabird Rehabilitation Sanctuary has received 11,000 birds since it opened in 2004. For more information about BirdFest or other programs and activities at the Marine Science Center, you can visit marinesciencecenter.com or you can call 386-304-5545. Passenger traffic is on the rise for VOTRAN, Volusia County's public transportation system. More people in Volusia County are using public transportation. VOTRAN ridership has increased for the sixth consecutive year. With the fiscal year that concluded September 30th, more than 3.7 million boardings were recorded on fixed route service, almost a 5% increase from the previous year. In a tough economy like, uh, like we're experiencing and we have been experiencing for the past few years, um, more and more residents and visitors are recognizing the, the value of public transportation and uh, recognizing that it's, a, that it's an option that uh, can save them some money. and. Uh, with the, the price of gas fluctuating the way it does these days and uh, just an overall tough economy, uh, there's more and more people recognizing the benefits of public transportation. During the county's last fiscal year, Votran recorded in excess of four million boardings on all services. Ridership in West Volusia increased to over 553,000 trips, a 6% increase over last year. Wheelchair boardings were approximately 25,000 boardings in the last year on the fixed route. Votran's gold service paratransit vans transported about 270,000 people. Americans with Disabilities Act trips decreased less than 2%. Votran's combined on-demand trips decreased 3% over the previous year. This year, our ridership on the flex service was about 21,000 boardings, uh, which is uh, about the same as we experienced, uh, we experienced last year. The, uh, our paratransit service uh, we, we boarded 270,000 uh, passengers on a paratransit service, um, which actually uh, results in a, a little bit of a decrease uh, over last year. So it's about a 3% decrease from last year. There were approximately 103,000 boardings with riders transporting bicycles. For more information on Votran, to track your route or to check a bus schedule, you can visit Votran.org. Hello, I'm Dr. Willie Kimmins, a member of the Children and Families Advisory Board. This volunteer group works with the Volusia County Council and makes recommendations that promote healthy children and strong families. It is an honor and a pleasure to serve on this board. The county has openings on several advisory boards, which allow you to play an important role in a policymaking process. If you'd like to share your time and talents with your county government, we'd like to hear from you. Please visit volusia.org slash advisory and complete an application of the board of your choice. Today we must make a concerted effort to save our children because our children are our future. Thank you. And now let's join Michelle Coates as the business beat as she was able to tour a very special manufacturing facility in DeLand, Covidian. Hi, we're here at Covidian DeLand, which is celebrating 50 years of innovative, quality medical products. I'm Michelle Coates with The Business Beat. Covidian is a local medical supplies manufacturer with a long history in DeLand. Situated on 46 acres, the DeLand plant houses 460,000 square feet of manufacturing space and employs about 500 people. The plant operates 24 hours a day, five days a week, producing disposable syringes. Products manufactured in DeLand are shipped around the country and around the world. We recently spoke with Mike McGrew, Covidian DeLand plant manager. Here in DeLand, we manufacture needles and syringes, um, specifically safety needle and syringes, as well as products that are used in the veterinarian and dental markets. 
um, as such, those, those needles and syringes are ubiquitous in, in healthcare worldwide these days. Um, because of that, there's a, a large need to produce high volumes of, manuf of manufactured needles and syringes, of which we do on a daily basis here in, in the lab. Covidian employs 38,000 employees worldwide in 70 countries, with products sold in over 140 countries, and has 41 manufacturing facilities in 17 countries. Global corporate headquarters are in Dublin, Ireland, and U.S. corporate headquarters are in Mansfield, Massachusetts. Covidian was recently recognized with a Thomson Reuters Top 100 Global Innovators Award and was ranked number 67 by Forbes as one of the world's most innovative companies. For the awards program that you're referring to is an initiative of the IP solutions business of Thomas Reuters and honors the 100 corporations and institutions around the world that are at the heart of innovation as measured by a series of proprietary patent related metrics. Since Brunwick opened the state-of-the-art plant in 1963, generations of local families have worked here. A 50th anniversary celebration attended by community leaders, employees, retirees, and their families was recently held at Covidian in Deland. We employ about 500 uh, employees here on site, um, largely here from the local Deland area and the surrounding areas around that, but, but some of them from the Volusia and Seminole counties as well. Um, we employ people from ranging from entry-level positions out on the production floor, um, all the way through to technical positions, uh, engineering, uh, accounting, uh, human resources, quality assurance. Um, we, it takes a wide variety of professionals in order to produce the products that we produce reliably on a daily basis. The DeLand Manufacturing Operations were originally a locally based company called Roar Products Company that relocated from Connecticut. Its founder, ZM Rohr, started the company in 1948 and pioneered the syringe technology used today. Rohrs later sold the company to Brunswick. The company that included the Deland plant was acquired by Tyco International in the 1990s, which then spun it off as Covidian in 2007. Covidian is what I call a pure device company, and its, its focus on innovation um, and its dedication to medical devices um, was one of the things that, that really inspired me to come to work to Covidian and gets me out of bed every day. Covidian provides advanced surgical tools and supplies, sutures and wound care products, needles and syringes, vascular therapy products, respiratory care pro devices, and much more under key brand names such as Kindle, Nelcor, Puritan Bennett, and Valley Lab. These products are used in hospitals, acute care facilities, nursing homes, rehab centers, ambulatory surgery centers, and physicians' offices, as well as at many veterinary facilities. So there's a pretty good chance that the last medical procedure you or your pet had included a syringe produced right here in Volusia County at Covidian. Thank you for joining us today at Covidian Delan. I'm Michelle Coates with The Business Beat. Time now to join health correspondent Stephanie Strong for this report from the Volusia County Health Department. Educating, inspiring, changing perception. HIV has evolved into a nameless, faceless epidemic. All too often, inaccurate perceptions about the disease are perpetrated by a long list of exhausted stereotypes. The truth is, you can't tell if someone is positive just by looking at them. This virus knows no color, creed, or sexuality. And no one is immune. These are the faces of HIV. And there are many stories that go along with each journey. Omar's story, sick. And needing help. When I actually did go to the health department within that two week span of time, I had developed double pneumonia, was having night sweats, fevers, nausea, fatigue, to the point, and I was like, my body was just wasting away, and I really couldn't put it off any longer. So I went to the hospital and went to the ER. They had me sitting down there for 
six to eight hours in, they just took me upstairs. They didn't tell me what was going on, what I had, although in the back of my mind I knew. And um, it was really tough. It was extremely tough. Because my family was there and they were supportive, but I was so sick that they really couldn't come sit vigil with me because at the time, my CD4 count was less than 20. So I was pretty much on my deathbed. Today, Omar stands outside of the Florida Department of Health's Faces of HIV exhibit. His face is just one of the many spotlighted here. It has been a very interesting journey so far. Um, I, I am embracing it um, because it's forcing me to, um, it's helping me to accept my own disease as well and also to empower other people with knowledge of what the disease is and what it does or does not look like. People with HIV are fathers, grandmothers, friends, and neighbors. They are people you pass on the street and people you meet. And they have one important characteristic in common with all of us. They are human beings. In the beginning, I guess, honestly, it was a reckless abandon to numb myself from all the aspects and the feelings that were associated with HIV. So, you know, drank like a fish, acted like I was only going to be here until I was 35, um, made, you know, some stupid choices um, because of that. Um, so it was kind of a reckless abandon in the beginning. Jeff says his perspective changed once he decided to seek treatment. That gave him the will to live. And that's inside of him each and every day of his journey. The reason that we created the Faces of HIV was to actually put a face to HIV, make HIV not seem like it's something separate from the rest of the community, but a part of the community. Through captivating portraits, insightful interviews, and emotional journal writing, the Faces of HIV Project examines the effects of stigmas, the personal relationships, and care issues associated with being HIV positive. For more information about the Faces of HIV exhibit, please visit www.wemakethechange.com. For Evolution Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. As always, if you have questions about this or any other health-related issues, you can log on to volusiahealth.com. Time now to head into the studio to join our very own Community Information Director, Dave Byron, as he sits down with his guest, Veteran Services Director, Mike White. Thanks, Amber, and hi, everyone. With the war in Afghanistan winding down, the wants and needs of our servicemen and women are of utmost importance. Volusia County has a very active Veterans Affairs Office that's headed up by Mike White, who's with us in the studio today. With Veterans Day right around the corner and our men and women in Afghanistan and other dangerous places around the world, it's a very good time to remember the men and women who are serving today in our armed forces as well as the veterans who have served our country since its inception, practicing the freedoms we enjoy. Florida is a haven for retired veterans, and of course, that includes Volusia County. Mike, how are you doing today? Good, sir. How are you doing? Great. Thanks very much. Uh, veterans Day right around the corner. Oh, yes. Our veterans are a very important component of the county's economy. Uh, I think we have about 75,000 uh, military veterans living here. It, is that right? It's about right. 70, 75,000 veterans, retirees, those who are in the Guard, the Reserve, things of that nature. And, you know, we know that uh, with the economy getting a little bit better, people being able to uh, pick up stakes and retire. Mm -hmm. um, we expect Florida to continue to be uh, one of the leading, if not leading states for retired military veterans uh, right here in the Sunshine State. Absolutely. We got the sun, we got the beaches, we've got the 
type of services that they want. A lot of legislation. I mean, the VA medical centers, the clinics. Sure. Got it. Mike, you know, we've talked in the past about the fact that the uh, Veterans Administration seems to have a little bit different number than uh, we have in terms of the number of veterans here. Um, there's a good reason for uh, the difference, I guess. Oh, absolutely. The, the numbers that you get out of the Department of Veterans Affairs is about 60,000, 59, 9 or something like that. And that's just people who are registered with the VA. Not all veterans who get out register for right. health care, register for claims or appeals and things. We do have some active duty here. We have some guard, very heavily mm -hmm. uh, National Guard uh, units in Volusia right. County, the reserves. Uh, got them all. Hey, Mike, you just mentioned something that uh, I, I want to touch on before we lose sight of it. And you said they're not, all these veterans are not registered. I know when talking to you, you've always said to me, anyone that is a military veteran should register with your office, even if they are not intending to get any benefits at this time. Is that Ab right? Absolutely, Dave. If, if nothing else, come in, bring your DD-214 in. We'll put it in a program that we have called Liberty. We'll keep it forever uh, digitally. But we could also explain to you what rights, what claims you could file, what different benefits and entitlements that you have. They're yours, and you need to know about them. They're quite confusing. So if you get into the system, Mike, and then you, you want to file a claim later, does it hasten the process that you're already, already registered? Well, it, if we have the DD-214, that's the first step right. that we need to, to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, would, we would offer you the chance, and we'll help you get into the, the VA health side or the comp and pension side, either way you want to do it. Absolutely, it helps. Those benefits that come in uh, to the veterans across the United States, of course, here in Volusia County, Florida, or whatever, I mean, those pensions, those benefits are very important, not only to those people receiving those benefits, but they're important to the overall economy. Those transfer payments are a big deal here. Oh, it's a big deal here, $179 million annually just to Volusia County in compensation and pension benefits. Uh, about 1.3 billion in housing and home loan guarantees. Uh, our office alone pulled in last year, I believe it was about 18 million on top of that in retroactive payments to our right. veterans. I want to talk about that retro for a minute, mm -hmm. Mike. Uh, my understanding is, is that a claim becomes, uh, the, the date of a claim is when that person files with your office for that claim, even though the benefits may not be approved for a year, two years later. And a lot of times you can go back, way back, and get payments that veterans are, are entitled to that they haven't collected, and sometimes they get a pretty sizable retroactive oh, check. Oh, absolutely, sir. There's, we love to fight and, uh, and try to get the most money we can for the veterans. Let's put it this way. A veteran served, they were whole when they went in, they come out, they're less than whole. Mm -hmm. And the laws are there to, all the way back to Abraham Lincoln, to uh, allow us to fight for those rights and benefits. I mean, mm -hmm. the largest retro we ever gave uh, was one that I handled was over $817,000 tax-free. Unbelievable. Uh, and, and we go back and fight. It takes time. Right. Uh, first level, uh, first claims, uh, probably 12 months, 18 months, depending on, on the claim and everything. First appeal after that's gonna take another 12 to 18 months. Right. Next appeal to the Board of Veterans Appeal, three to five years. But yeah, it does. We fight it. We, we look for it all. Well, let's talk about uh, that, Mike. Uh, for those folks that aren't familiar with your role in county government, I, I, I believe I'm correct in saying that every Florida county is required to have a Veterans Affairs office, and you're basically there to advocate and, and, and fight for the benefits that the federal government pays to veterans. Is that Ab correct? Absolutely correct. We are that veterans uh, representative. We mm -hmm. will use our people that we have in the regional office in St. Petersburg, in Washington, D.C., because we're all collected uh, into groups of, po uh, we call them power of attorneys, but they're actually veteran service organizations. And we go through them, we help them, we get the, the claims, the appeals together, we f present that. If it's in D.C., we have people in D.C. to do it. Mike, uh, I know each one of you guys got a pair of scissors about this big <laughs> on your office to cut through that red tape. Oh, there's a lot of red tape. That's basically what you guys sure. do. Sure, that's exactly right. For Vietnam veterans, of course, we all know about the Agent Orange Act of 1991, right. the presumptives that uh, go along with that. And that, uh, that in and of itself was hard enough to get passed legislatively. We do that. 
and uh, since they passed the law and they've added to the presumptive list and things, that makes it real easy to get those. Mm -hmm. So if you have a presumptive from exposure to the herbicide Agent Orange, we can get that done real quick. Right. It's called a DBQ and a bunch of things that would uh, confuse you, but we can get those done real quick. But we can also dovetail off of that and have secondary type of incidents. For instance, you're exposed to Agent Orange and Agent Orange is one of the um, disabilities is diabetes mellitus type 2. Right. So if you have DM2 or you're diabetic because of service in there, you may get hypertension, you may get ischemic heart disease, you may get anything that is secondary to that. Right. And that's, that's, that's important for us. Laymen and people out there wouldn't know. But you're, but you're able to link all of these things together, mm -hmm. as you say, if there's a presumptive. In this case, you're talking about Agent Orange, and there are several other presumptives as oh, well. Oh, absolutely, yes. Mike, uh, obviously, uh, for all Americans today, and I'm sure for our veterans, health care, access to health care, uh, that sort of thing is, is on the top of everyone's mind, correct? Absolutely. Uh, is that the number one concern for our veterans? It's these number days? one concern. Uh, we changed uh, a lot of the laws and legislation. If those coming back from OIF, OEF, Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom, uh, they're in Afghanistan, they get, they get top billing. They go in the door to the health clinics right away. There is no problem with that. They can stay in for five years. It gives them time to get those, that health care and those benefits going so that they can remain in the health care system. For those people that don't know where your offices are uh, or perhaps they want to get a hold of you, uh, sure. how do people get more information about County Veteran Services? Oh, by, the, by all means. If you're on the west side, uh, call the office here in DeLand, 386-740-5102. If you're on the east side, 386-254-4646. We have Daytona Beach, DeLand, New Smyrna Beach, and Orange City. Wow. Orange City and New Smyrna Beach, Wednesdays through Fridays. And uh, we're just constantly full of people and doing our thing. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, go by your office every day and, uh, you know, those chairs are filled every oh, yeah. day. You know, I guess with the economy being what it is, Mike, uh, those veterans are coming in to your offices and to get every single uh, bit of entitlement. Uh. We're seeing World War II veterans come in who've never been here before. Wow. When it comes down to the new health care system that's it's starting, if you're in the VA health care program, you do not have to sign up for the other one. This wow. one is acceptable. That's a big benefit to a lot, wow. of, a wow. lot of people. Well, Mike, I want to uh, thank you for uh, sharing the information with us. Uh, sure. Veterans Day right around the corner, a very important day uh, to stop and uh, think about all the good things that our veterans have done and continue to do mm -hmm. uh, across uh, our country today. So, again, thanks for sharing the information. Well, with I appreciate us that, Dave, and I know your son's <coughs> coming home, and that, we'll celebrate that at the end of the month. But i got to tell you something, six years in a row, Dave, best of the best. We got awarded it, and it's coming to your way in the next couple of weeks. Well, we Mike, done that, it again. That's just office, and congratulations Thank to you, you and your staff. You guys really do a great job. Thank you very much. Our guest today, Mike White, he's the Veteran Services Director with Volusia County. And with that, we'll go back to you, Amber. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, too, for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there, too. You can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today, Volusia County Government's public radio program. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson. Have a wonderful evening.